While we hopefully know the basics of rotational kinematics and its fundamental equations, how do we get objects to rotate in the first place? When we talk about making objects rotate, the most important new concept we need to learn about is torque. Torque, denoted by the Greek letter tau, is equal to the force applied times a quantity called the lever arm, where the lever arm is defined as the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation or evolution to the line of application of the force, equal to r sine theta. Another way to think about torque is the radius, or distance between axis and point of force application, times the force component perpendicular to this radius. This quantity may seem new at first, but think of it basically as the force of the rotational world. While forces push and pull objects, torques twist and turn them, causing them to rotate. In addition, because torque is the product of two quantities, force and lever arm, you can change the magnitude of the torque in two different ways. The first way is to increase the force applied. For example, if I were to lightly push on a door versus kicking it open, the door would rotate about the hinge faster when I kick it. The second way is to increase the lever arm. One great example of this idea is to use tools like wrenches. While it's almost impossible to unscrew a very tight metal nut using your fingers, using a long wrench increases the lever arm that you apply a force to, which makes the metal nut easier to unscrew. But not all objects are affected identically under these torques, and for that we need to talk about another quantity called moment of inertia. Moment of inertia, denoted usually by a capital letter I, measures an object's resistance to rotation, and always comes in the form of some mass times some length squared. Now, whether this length be the radius of a circular object or the length of a rectangular one, the coefficient in front tells you how relatively easy or hard something is to rotate. While some of the most common moment of inertias and shapes are seen here, you will be given these quantities in the questions themselves or on your equation sheets, but it never hurts to memorize them. Finally, the equation linking torque and moment of inertia is that torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration of the object. In essence, this will act as the Newton second law of the rotational world. It has your twisting and turning force, your rotational resistance mass, and your angular acceleration. When it comes to solving torque problems, there's two main steps we need to think about. For example, let's calculate where on this seesaw Patch, who weighs 100 newtons, would need to sit in order to balance out Jason, who weighs 500 newtons and sits 0.2 meters away from the seesaw's fulcrum. With questions involving static equilibrium or objects that aren't moving and are balanced, we now need to make sure that both forces and torques all sum to zero. Quite simply, the forces on this seesaw will always balance out as no matter how much weight you put on top of the seesaw, the floor will provide a normal force at the fulcrum point to balance it out. With that, we can look at the first and arguably most important step to solving torque questions, choosing a pivot point. Because torques involve a lever arm, we can technically analyze the torques on the seesaw from any point in the world. However, because the normal force is variable and changes based on the mass we place on the seesaw, let's select our pivot point to be the fulcrum, making the lever arm, and thus the torque due to this variable and complicated force, equal to zero. After selecting a pivot point, simply equate the torques to zero. As with Jason alone, his torque will cause this seesaw to angularly accelerate due to the previously learned equation. Assuming Patch sits some distance x away from the fulcrum, he will apply a torque of 100 times x newton meters that tries to rotate the seesaw counterclockwise. Jason, on the other hand, will apply a torque of 500 times 0.2 newton meters that attempts to rotate it clockwise. Equating these two quantities, we'll find that Patch must be 1 meter away from the fulcrum to balance the seesaw. Torque and moment of inertia may appear complicated at first, as they're entirely new concepts. However, in reality, they are applied and function in ways extremely similar to force and mass, so make use of free body diagrams and force or torque equations just as you would before. By selecting a pivot point that makes the torques due to the unknown complicated forces equal to zero, and by applying the relationship torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration, these problems should soon become simple and easy to handle. With that, you can feel good that you've just finished learning about torque and moment of inertia.